I recently posted a video on TikTok asking some of my followers if they could let me know some of their biggest art challenges and concerns. So in this video, I'm gonna be going through some of their questions and seeing if I can help. just get up the questions. I'm really struggling with art block. I've had it, believe it or not, for two years. How to get out of it? Any tips or tricks? This is a really good question and it's something that I've struggled with for years and years. I've always had a sudden burst of art inspiration and then like a couple of weeks or a couple of months later I'll just stop because the main problem that I found is knowing what to even draw or paint in the first place. So one thing that I would suggest and something that's really helped me recently is giving yourself a challenge, giving yourself something that's actually quite difficult to achieve and trying to encourage yourself to beat that challenge. So for example, I've challenged myself to paint every country in the world using Google Earth. There are other things like Inktober is a great one that I know a lot of artists do which is where you essentially get a different prompt for every day of the month in October. And that's a really great challenge to help break you free and get into the routine and the habit of painting or drawing even. Another great tip that I found is to just make sure that you have your art materials out and handy. If they're tidied away all the time, then you're just less likely to use them. You just wanna try and remove as many barriers as you can to doing a painting and if that barrier is you can't be bothered to get your art materials out then leave them somewhere that are easy to access and you can actually just get started whenever you want. This is one of the reasons why I really like watercolour because you don't have to get loads and loads of things out. You literally just get your watercolour palette, some water and a brush and a kitchen towel and that is basically it. So if you're struggling with inspiration or getting started, try and find a medium that's just easy to get going with, even if that's just using a pen and a pencil and a piece of paper. You can create some amazing art just using that. So hopefully that was helpful. So this question is from Lucia Tellier 71. Hello. How do you blend two colors nicely, not leaving like a mark of the darker color? So blending in watercolour is basically a matter of two things. Firstly, making sure you're using enough water and secondly, having good quality paper. It's surprising how much difference paper makes when it comes to watercolour painting. And if you're really struggling with blending and you think you're doing everything right, it might actually be the paper that you're using. The other option is to work in sketchbooks because you can usually get more paper for your money. I would suggest trying the Stillman and Burn sketchbooks. They're really good and you get quite a lot of pages for your money. This next question comes from Demilexmond underscore. And it's, how do you paint small details with watercolour? I only get an ugly mess of colours. Sad face, sad crying face. So with small details, I actually find that if you include too many small details in a watercolour painting, it can get a bit of a mess. So I actually would advise to not fuss over those small details and focus on getting the basics right. Focus on getting the drawing right, focus on getting the shading and the shapes that you're, that you're painting right first and then the small details will just be what you do right at the very end. Another tip is make sure you're using the right brush. So this is my small Kalins Raphael Kalinsky sable brush that I use for my small details. Also with the ugly mess of colours, you might just want to try using less colours. So that's something that's helped me with each painting that I do. I try to pick three main primary colours and then just a few earth colours as well to throw in there. And I try to just stick to that rather than doing every colour in your palette. The next question is from Emily Hjornebeck. My watercolour always leaks through the paper. Do I need to buy a more expensive watercolour book? So. If your watercolour is leaking through the paper, yeah, it's probably not watercolour paper that you're using because even the cheapest watercolour paper will not leak through. So 
I would just suggest getting the best that you can afford. Even if that's the cheapest watercolor paper, it's still gonna be better than printer paper or paper that's designed just for drawing because that sort of paper will most likely just leak through it. And that kind of paper doesn't have the, it's called sizing, which is basically some sort of something, I don't know exactly what it is, but they put something on top of the paper that stops the paint fully going through to the other side. I don't quite understand how it works, but basically any watercolor paper that you buy shouldn't leak through. And if it is, then it's probably not watercolor paper. So the next question is from sophie.bipx. I can't paint rocks or cliffs at all, please help. So with cliffs and rocks, I kind of approach them the same way that I would any subject. So I think it's actually quite helpful to stop thinking of anything that you're painting as a particular thing. So don't think I'm painting a rock and I can't paint rocks, so this is gonna be hard. Just think, what are the shapes? What are the shadow shapes? What are the light shapes? And just focus on that. Focus on the values and getting those right. So that's how light the lights are compared to how dark the darks are. So focus on things like that instead of thinking, oh, I'm really bad at doing rocks and cliffs because that is just not gonna get you anywhere. The next question is from Lottie 2007. How much water do I need to make a watercolor painting? Uh, this is kind of like asking how long is a piece of string because it really depends on how, how light your watercolor painting is, how many shadows you're gonna have. If you are just trying to do a very light painting, maybe a lot of clouds, something that has a lot of flowing blended shapes you'll probably need quite a lot of water if you're doing something that's more full of harsh lines and dry brushing then obviously you'll need less water so that's kind of difficult to answer i do have a video that has a few different tips on controlling the amount of water on your brush so i'll put that up here katie aguon says i know this isn't about how to paint but what got you into painting thank you for this question katie I've definitely been into art my whole life, but painting definitely came later. I first of all was just really obsessed with drawing and I used to draw loads of faces and portraits and maybe I'll insert some here if I ha I'm brave enough to share with you some of my old art. So I, I got back into painting a couple of years ago. I started with acrylics and I did really enjoy that for a time. But then when I found watercolor, I think I realized that it's a lot easier, especially if you're painting out and about. And I like to paint on location a lot. So watercolor was just the perfect solution for that. So that is really why I got back into watercolor painting. Also, there's an organization called Urban Sketching and I've really been inspired by them. People like Liz Steele and Mark Taro Holmes have really inspired me to get into painting and just start sketching anything and everything that I can find when I'm out and about. It's just a really great way to observe the world and once you've painted something from life, you will remember exactly what that thing looks like and next time you're walking down that street you'll have a really weird memory where you'll be like i know exactly what that where that fence is where that window is and it's kind of crazy it gives you this crazy memory and my memory is pretty bad so it's been helpful to help me remember things especially when i'm going on holiday i loved uh, last year went to Byron Bay and painted around there and I feel like my memory of that trip is just so much stronger because I painted when I was there so yeah that's kind of the long-winded answer of why I got into painting. Samuel Art has asked I kind of struggle with painting clouds in watercolors so I actually made a TikTok video about this and I'll just get what I made these are three different techniques that I have found for painting clouds in watercolor. So the first one is wet and wet. So you basically wet the whole page and dip the paint into the wet page and that will create a really feathered edge and soft edge. The only problem with this method is it's kind of hard to control. So if you're doing something very specific with your clouds, you might wanna try a different method, but this is good, for example, when I'm doing my sketches and my quick paintings, I like to use this method just because it's the fastest. The second method is paint the 
sky in blue and then get some paper towel and just dab the cloud shapes. You want to get paper towel that isn't too textured otherwise you'll end up with weird paper towel marks on your painting which has happened to me before which is just weird. Um, but if you scrunch it up enough then when you dab it on it will look like clouds and not like you've just put some paper towel on your paper. And the final technique is, it's not technically watercolour but it's to use white gouache. So paint your sky in and then get some white gouache. So this is the gouache that I use. It is the Schmincke gouache. But basically any white gouache will work. Um, and that is an opaque paint. So that basically means when you paint over anything, it will hide everything that's behind it. So that's why it works well with clouds because you can't see the blue of the sky behind it. So there, there are three different techniques for painting clouds in watercolor. Crazy Joe says, how do you draw cloth slash material? This is kind of the same answer that I had for the rocks and cliffs question. So I basically would suggest that you don't think about what it is you're actually painting because that can really get in the way of just painting what you see. If you're thinking, I need to draw some cloth and material, it's going to be very difficult to paint it how you actually see it because you'll instead be trying to paint what you think you should be painting. So really just try and ignore the fact that you're painting cloth and just focus on what are the shadows, what are the highlights, what shape are they, and then just build it up from there. And then when you're done, you'll have something that looks like cloth, but you won't have even noticed that that's what you've been painting. Mahowikawai, oh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing any of these names, asked, when applying a color, how do I know which color to use for the shading? So basically when I paint the shadows, I generally paint them a cooler shade. I mean, there's obviously exceptions to this rule, but pretty much most of the time, if you look at things in real, real life, you'll notice that shadow is usually cooler. So by that, I mean more blue. So usually I, with watercolor, I just paint my shadows with ultramarine blue. It might not be necessarily the most accurate way of doing it, but it's definitely a very quick way to do it. And it's the same with faces as well. Even when you're doing, you might think blue, that's weird for a face. But if you actually take a photo of anything, put it into Photoshop or, or use a color picker from the internet and just pick out the different colors, you'll be really surprised of what the actual colors are compared to what you think they are. Nuta Lanutria asked me, what brushes do you use for water paintings? So I mainly have three brushes that I use. These are them here. Let's see if you can see that. So this, this one is the Winsor & Newton Squirrel Mop Brush because some of the bristles have been slowly falling out of this brush. So it used to be a lot more full than it is now. Um, but I still really like it anyway. So I just keep using it even though the bristles are falling out, but I probably need to get a new one because it is quite old. I think probably my favorite brush of all time is this silver black velvet brush. And this brush is in size 10 and it holds a lot of water, but you can also get a very fine point with it. So these brushes are quite expensive, but I kind of just see it as an investment and they last for years and years and years. So if you actually do a lot of paintings with them, then it's worth it, or at least that's what I tell myself. And finally, I have this Raphael Kalinsky sable brush, which I use for all my detailed work. Sarah Mayak asked, how do you mix colors correctly and get the right undertones? This is quite a big question and there's a lot of different things that go into mixing colors. The main thing that I found with watercolor is try not to mix too much on the palette and almost try and mix on the paper, which sounds a bit strange, but if you have, for example, if you're painting a tree and you have a light area that's more yellow toned and a shadow area that's more blue toned, instead of just painting green, then you might want to try mixing the blue and the yellow on the paper and letting the watercolor do its thing and almost letting the watercolor paint for you. This really only applies to watercolor though. If you're using any other medium, then the main 
tip I would give you is just to make sure you know your color theory. Make sure you know which colors mix with which and understand your paint because one red is not going to mix the same as another red with your other paints. So it really depends if it's a cool tone or a warm tone of that specific primary color because there's no one primary that is a pure primary color that will mix with everything. There's a lot to this topic so I might make a longer video at some point. Someone with a very interesting username said how do you paint faces with watercolor? So when it comes to painting faces something that I've struggled with before is wanting to just keep painting and keep painting and keep painting without a real plan in mind and this can really ruin the fresh look of your painting especially when it comes to watercolor. So I would suggest planning it ahead in your mind, knowing roughly how many layers you wanna do and what you want to achieve with each layer. So this question comes from yes, and then a lot of numbers. How do you do the line work? So I usually use a pen, pen either a gray pen or a black pen. So I've just filled these fountain pens with ink and it's waterproof ink. So when I paint over it with my watercolors, it doesn't budge at all. And the main thing that I look for when I'm doing my line work, for the very first step, I try and find the biggest line in the painting that really helps me fit the scene onto the page because it can be very easy to start doing a drawing and then realize that it doesn't fit on your page and then you try and cram everything in and that's how you can end up with really wonky drawings because you're trying to fit something into a page that just doesn't fit. So in this painting, I painted this first because I knew that this was the biggest line in the painting and then second, I did this line. And that just helped me fit the whole scene onto the page a bit better. So it's really about finding the big shapes first and making it very basic and simple and just thinking what are the lines, what are the squares and what are the squiggly bits and then just putting that all together. Again, try not to think of actually what you're drawing but just look at the shapes instead. Saz Dura asked me, how do you not have harsh lines around the watercolor and have the separate colors be obvious and distinct? So harsh lines is usually when you're using too much water compared to the paint and it makes this sort of weird blooming effect. So if you're struggling with that, then make sure you're using your paper towel. I dab my brush almost every time before I start painting, just even just a tiny bit, because usually I do have too much water on my brush, especially if I'm using a mop brush or a brush that holds a lot of water. So make sure you're using your paper towel as much as you can. Cecilia asked, how do I paint a background without the object's color on top being altered? I would say work from back to front. So do the background first and then you don't have to worry about it. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. And if there's anything that I've mentioned in this video that you'd like me to expand on in another video, then just comment it down below. And if you have any other questions, then also just leave a comment and I'll try my best to answer them. That's all from now. I'll see you next time.